here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Hart. Uh, two minutes on Nick, from me to you. Um, I've known Nick probably about 10 years. When I got into email marketing, Nick identified it, and at the time he was working at an organisation called Marketing, he was a director at an organisation called Marketers 4DC. And he took my email solution, which was wonderful, because his company was paying me two, three, four grand a month. It was, it was fantastic. Um, but then sadly, his organisation um, wised up a little bit, and they said, well, the accountants wised up, didn't they? And they said, um, actually, we're better off spending this money elsewhere. Can John, we're going to build our own system. Bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a gutter for me, but it was, it was better for them. Nick and I have been in touch ever since. Um, he's recently gone it alone, so we're teaming up under social media directors um, to conquer the world, and he's the intelligent part of the business. Uh, yeah, loosely, loosely the intelligent part, but, but as a benchmark, it really doesn't have to go that far, obviously. Um, to, just to give a, an explanation as to what I'm trying to get across today, a uh, couple of quick questions. It's meant to be a workshop, and there's not actually been that much interaction from what I've seen during today. So, uh, just a quick show of hands. Who from the business uh, world at the moment is doing anything in social media? Okay. Um, of everyone has put their hands up. Are you actually doing it, or is it in your, your companies who, who are doing it? So hands up if you're actually doing it yourself. Okay. And would you say that at this stage it's very much a case of putting your toe in the water, seeing what's out there, or, or is there a level of, of comfort amongst people as that you know what the hell you're doing? Um, and again, would, would you say that, just shout out, why are you doing it? Why, why actually are you spending this time and resource partaking in social media? And I know social media is, let's, let's get it as a, a definition, it's very broad, it could be YouTube, it could be LinkedIn, Twitter, there are a myriad of platforms, but why, why do you feel the need to do it? Just, yeah. Sorry? To reach a wider audience. Reach wider audience. Because social media is the way to go, everybody like, believes that social media is actually To keep in contact, to keep your profile out there, and to attract people to events. <coughs> Free advertising. Yeah, I and mean, I, I would say social media is for me. It's another channel. It's not replacing other things. It's just an extension to marketing. So, unfortunately for marketeers, you now have even more on your plate, um, and it's still very much an immature space. Uh, let's make no bones about that. Uh, there was a, our, our guru Seth Godin, the Mr. Marketeer of, uh, of the world, um, I thought this was quite apt. Uh, a tribe is a group of people connected to one another, connected to a leader and connected to an idea. For millions of years, human beings have been part of one tribe or another. A group needs only two things to be a tribe, a shared interest and a way to communicate. Well, that, that's just applicable now to social media because you find your, your place, it's what you like, it's, it's common, common interest, commonality. Um, basically, John's done a bit. I, the obligatory who's here. I'd like to think I've got some basis of standing up here that I've got an experience to do this. So, if you really want to know and show my age, I was on email since the early 90s, created a first corporate website back in 94, uh, and uh, we were the first company to do a live uh, web chat, which was uh, uh, back in 1999, which, uh, and one of the early pioneers of streaming on, on Tinterweb. So ultimately, this is, um, goes back to why, why are we doing it? So for me, how do consumers relate to a brand? I've tried to not use the word customer too much because they're consumers, really, I think. So the key to learning is through insight and engagement. It all goes back to the customer, and everything should relate back to the customer because if you don't understand your customer, how can you sell to them, and are you creating something that you don't know that the audience is ready for, in essence? It's all about that dialogue. A few times at some of the workshops I've seen, seen, heard the word relationship, and this is just another extension of it, which just reiterates the point of what you're saying. Communities especially, it's all relationships. There seems to be that a lot of companies, what, what you said, why you're doing it, is not uncommon, and a lot of businesses are doing a turn the water because you can't escape from the fact of it's here, it's
it's not going away. But there is this thing at the moment, the vanity of numbers. So I'm seeing a lot of businesses who are going, ah, oh, it's brilliant, we've now got X number of likes, we've got X number of followers. Frankly, it doesn't mean diddly because there's nothing in there that, that helps your business. So people like you, and so what? There's, there's no substance behind that. You need to dig deeper. Um, what I do think is technology is here and technology is helping. I was at an event, the Social Media World Forum, was about three weeks ago. There were at least a dozen social media listening platform providers there. And I let, went literally from one centre to the next going, what do you do that those people don't do? And they're all much for muchness with a slight nuance between them. The good news is people that start doing the social listening are at least understanding that they need to start to quantify it. But it's, there's a maturity coming that once you quantify it, you realise it's not enough and it's not telling you a great deal of substance. So again, understanding the customer is first need to helping them. And that's like, uh, there's a lot of people I've spoken to already who go, oh, social media, it's, it's not us. But you can't hide from it. This is a scary chart. Social media being a very broad term, this is just a sample of different companies that do different sorts of social media. And every day there's more to market, there's more apps, there's growth, there's more things you can do within it. So as Mark was just saying on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, there's features which are opening up and changing and how you do. You could spend your whole life and still not have enough time to keep on top of this. So you can get completely lost in it. Um, you've got to know where to prioritize it. And in fact, one of the big things that I've heard people say against social media is we don't have the resource, we don't have the time, it's not a priority, we don't have the money. There's so much out there that you can learn for free and, and find out about. You can do things on a daily basis just doing a little bit at a time. And for me, the whole social media space is all about being iterative. So you do something, you measure it, you move on, you tweak it, you measure it, and you keep working that way till you find something that's working for you. Um, if, obviously you're not naysayers, but if you were and you didn't think there was a future in social media, just a few stats, just about the growth of social media, basically it's going nuts, it's, there's an upward trend, it's continuing to grow. The one I really liked is this one about growth on mobile, which mobile access to the internet quadrupled over the past four years, desktop has risen 37%. That desktop growth hasn't been uh, hit by the mobile growth, it's additional too. That's not counting also tablets as well. So it's just mass on mass growth. And what we're seeing is the trends of people on their commute to and from work, sitting in front of telly, social, that's where the mobile is becoming key to, to everything else. And I would pretty much bet a lot of money, everyone here has a mobile, and the majority of you all play around with your mobile, looking at stuff when you're meant to be doing other stuff at the same time. Uh, multitasking for women, for men it's just kind of bumbling along doing stuff. Yes, we're listening, kind of thing. Um, boom, can't deny it, 38 million adults in Great Britain access the internet every day. We all know it's growing, it's not going away. And this is from last year, uh, social indicator, and this is this one I liked. Um, so percentage <coughs> of the population, 76%. Again, what a lot of people say, it's not a B2B space. Well, frankly, we're all consumers whether we are doing whatever we do, and people who are in the B2B space are consumers. You can still talk to them. A lot of B2B conversations go on. One hour 51 average time each day. I think that's exaggerated, but even if it is, it's still a lot. Uh, it, it can't be too far short. This one, the location-based services, 9%. Um, I don't know... Again, just from the stats, again, most of you would switch off your location finder on your social media stuff. But that's growing, and that is about to boom. We are working with a company that can do geo-targeting based on where you are, and we think we can probably predict within 20 centimetres of where you stand. So when you're in a supermarket, you can pretty much judge what you're looking at at the time. Um, and it, fortunately, because the problem with the mobiles is the battery, these kind of things may exhaust batteries, but you can slip things in there to get more and more intelligent. It's only going to get better. So, social media, this is what we can do with it. Ultimately, it's not just about the stats. So, we think potential. You can identify audiences, define 
understand the people, discover things, inspire what's being said about your brand, your competitors, find out about segments, track and measure, do strategies, do advertising research. There's a lot there. The limitation really is what you think you can do with it. It's not just about hashtag words, track what are the key words for you. There's so much more you can do because the content is so rich. Um, this one is quite funny because, again, I would expect most of you to relate to this in terms of the, the history and the stages of social media growth. So typically how it starts in a business, uh, you've got marketing, customer support, delivering via traditional platforms, no social media. Then the dabbling in silos, normally you get some junior in an office who's done a bit of social media and someone goes, you, you, you do this stuff, can you do some tweeting on behalf of the company? And then all of a sudden people go, oh, there's response, there's a bit of growth here. Um, let's take it a bit more seriously and do something a bit more formalized in the office. And then when you see it starts to deliver, you start to invest in it, and the more you invest, the more you see you can do, and the growth continues. But it doesn't matter what industry you are. I've seen this with the, the uh, financial institutions up in the, the city. They still have some junior oik who's there just going, yeah, yeah, I've, I've always got my head down doing this. You, you go do this. Um, but the funny thing is, you can understand why it happens, but actually it's a little bit back to front about it. Because if you're going to be investing time in something, you think you should do a bit of research first, understand, and have a bit of a strategy before you just start talking to the world. Uh, again, as Mark was saying about LinkedIn, your personal space, you've got to think a lot about how you present yourself to the world. And um, to have people out there just <coughs> talking is, is a little dangerous. Uh, Altimeter, if you want some, ever want some good stats on social media, these guys are superb. There's a lot of free stuff about it. If you need to get people in your business to try and become stakeholders in, in what you want to do and get investment, they often have stats to back it up about the growth of social media. And again, it's just about the stages, the randomness, you start to formalize it, you integrate it into the business, and then it becomes completely holistic within the business. And ultimately, don't lose sight of the fact customer is key. Marketing departments take it over, now we've got digital teams getting involved. It still comes back to the point that it's all about the customer. It's not about the ego of the business or the individuals in the business. Um, great quote, uh, social media intelligence provides a real-time understanding of consumer perception, awareness, and overall sentiment of your business and product lines. On the sentiment side, the social listening platforms often say, we can give you sentiment, positive, negative, neutral, to a point. Because again, is it in context, is it a nuance, they can't understand sarcasm, for example, but you can get it. Uh, keep abreast of developing trends to create products that people are interested in to ultimately drive sales, which is what we're all here for. Um, expanding into the businesses, it now affects all the business. Uh, it's not just marketing anymore. Uh, I had an interesting conversation with somebody at the leading telco in the UK, name no names, uh, who looks after their social media. They use, the predicament they have is the, their employees talk about their business. Now, in theory, the employees should be the biggest advocates to the business. They need to understand what their employees are saying. Digging a bit deeper, their HR department track all these people anyway. Um, so there should be some linkage. And it's now becoming more and more common for HR personnel recruitment to, to just do this as standard. So integrating them into social media now is, is pretty much accepted, but it also goes beyond as well. You've got the customer experience, as I, we were just talking about before. My first point of complaint for Virgin Media was Twitter because nothing else worked. Uh, if you want cheap pizzas, tweet and you'll have a little bit of a uh, bidding war amongst pizza companies, little tip there. Um, sales, uh, social selling is the new buzz phrase at the moment, and then up and down the supply chain on the B2B front. And across the enterprise, again, this is just how it's being used, different number of ways it's being used. And this is not just from the quant stats. So you get the customer insights, you can get reviews, do a bit of forecasting, you work with your audience the whole time. It's not just about 
one way, it's a two-way communication. Um, so customer care, engaging with people, listening, feeding back. Um, and ultimately, <clears throat> a higher level of intelligence, the more you can glean, the more you can reinforce the bottom line, which is, again, what we're all judged on. For us to research, uh, about a month ago they published this to say 70% of marketers surveyed using social listening or monitoring tools uh, don't have a problem with the tools that they use. Although, again, I would possibly question that because the people that I see can do stuff with the tools, they can't do a lot and they don't necessarily understand a lot of what comes out of all of these listening platforms. Um, but most points to a lack of resources that is constraining their ability to derive meaningful insights, guide strategy, and answer business questions. Is it a case of prioritizing in the wrong space, looking at the quant and the stats, or is it actually put a bit more time into look at what people are saying, look at the conversations, and work to that to actually see what people say? And you collate it together to make it a little bit more plausible and meaningful. So currently, this is just my opinion. What you see within businesses at the moment, uh, three maybe different departments, a digital team, possibly a marketing and a market research team within an organisation, or it could be individuals, and obviously you have the social media space. So what's happening is digital, digital teams are doing things on social media, they're talking to the marketing team, the marketing team are putting branding into social media, they talk with the digital teams. The market research teams sit outside this, but they liaise with consumer research, customer satisfaction. What I suggest is actually stick them in the center of everything, because if you use the market research skills, it'll help you interpret what's being said in social media. And moving on, five areas that we try to kind of box them in to try and group it together. How can you use that research? Well, innovation, insights, concepts, communication, and tracking are the best ways we could try to group them together. Um, and this is where the knowledge can come from. So again, beyond the stats, beyond the numbers, look at the context and the conversations. So for example, innovation. Uh, if you hear what people are saying about your brand, you can work with them to see what's wrong, what's good, refine it, go out there, talk to people and actually see what they want. Don't necessarily produce a product that isn't wanted by anybody. If you don't actually have to build it, but you can talk to people and say, this is what we're, we're looking at. From the listening platforms, you know who your key influencers are, work with them, engage with them, get them in, on board and actually make them almost your advocates for anything. Uh, it's all real time, it's a live thing, so any issues that they're experiencing, do something about it. Um, we've been doing a lot of things with um, uh, just real time notifications and alerts. So, for example, uh, one of the large software companies, based on various keywords, when something happens anywhere, we then speak to the teams who look after these things to go, you need to be aware, this is happening, it's a sales opportunity, it's a customer satisfaction issue get back out there, do something with it, but actually work with these people and be vocal that you're doing something about it. From an insights point of view, obviously don't be intrusive. What nobody wants to, is to be sold on these platforms. It's all about engagement and relationships. <coughs> but learn the needs. Understand the purchase cycles as they pass through. What are people saying? Who are the advocates? Who are the influencers? Use these users. Understand. We can understand the demographics quite easily. There's a way of almost reverse engineering who these people are, what their interests are, um, and then again on the emotion and the sentiment side of things, what as from a marketing point of view we, we always recommend is if you understand the tone and style and language of your audience, then you should talk in that tone and style back to your audience, create that empathy where they, they, there's an understanding. Um, what you'd never want to do in the PR terms Somebody who writes for the Times wouldn't necessarily make a good headline for the Sun if talking in the right tone to the right audience. Uh, concepts, the same audience participation, shape products. Uh, what do people want? Um, talk to people. 
ultimately. And the communication, um, really, if you understand the audience, um, you can understand where they go, what they, what they talk about, how they talk about things. Um, but you talk with the people the whole time. It's not just about looking at keywords. People aren't automatons. It's very personal. It's done in certain style. Um, and that's the way that, whether you like it or not, that's the way people talk. That's the way that they want to be communicated with. And just to highlight how this can, can work, so there's a luxury cashmere brand, international brand. Uh, they wanted to understand target audience and findings to link this into their annual marketing strategy. So what was done, uh, over looking at 12 months worth of data, which is 35,000 mentions, uh, filtering through reading these mentions, um, not just analyzing it with software, but using people to look at it, collate it, group it, code it. What you could identify from the back of it was um, you can start defining user segments. Uh, we created four different user segments off the back of it because people have similarities in the way that they do things and the interests that they have. There's an emotive language, the way that people talk about Kashmir. Um, it's an aspirational product, but also things come out of it, such as as you can see, the term gifting wasn't in the brand's vocabulary before. What it transpires is that's got the most resonance of all the keywords that, that we came up with, but it was the context of it because it's all about gifting on behalf of other people. So you, you open, create a whole new opportunity for the brand just by looking at the conversations, but also where the conversations are taking place. Um, and again, you can see some seasonal hits. Obviously, at times you think make the most sense, so um, obviously Valentine's Day, um, it's a bit of a no-brainer gift. But the way that the findings were used, I thought rather cleverly on, on the brand's point of view, so you get all this data, they created a dictionary of terms based on what people are saying. All of this content, all of these keywords and emotive language was reinforced in all their marketing collateral, on their search engines, for their salespeople, because that's what their audience thinks and says and how they talk about it. So that became the driver for it. New opportunity for new products. There was also things people saying about, I love cashmere, everyone gets a scarf, wouldn't it be great if? Well, start looking at the opportunities that the audience is saying they'd like to, to see. Um, and it, it set the strategy about for the whole year. And this was a, it was a two week project um, which worked alongside the whole marketing team and the information is there. This is the beauty about it. We haven't had to go and do research and survey people. It's, it's there. You can go backwards with social listening platforms uh, quite comfortably four years. I think some of them <coughs> typically do 12 months, depending on what you, you pay for. But use it, frankly. Um, and uh, everybody loves a puppy picture. So uh, this was another brand that does natural dog food. Uh, this one was very, very recent. And what they wanted to do was understand their audience, uh, who's engaging with the brand, understand the conversations that they're having, the interests of the people, again, to try and understand the audience because a lot of people just look at face value at the listening. What do they engage with? Who are the influencers? Who should they be talking to moving forward? Um, if anyone has a dog, this is brilliant. Uh, Yes, I know where your socks are, and I believe you know where the treats are. Um, every dog, it seems, just nicks socks. I don't know why. Um, what, uh, what it transpired, uh, looking at three months' worth of data, allowed us to understand this is the makeup of the audience. So they're interested in jewellery, beauty products, fashion, nature. Um, there's something that was it one in three. Uh, one in three of these customers have a Twitter uh, site profile for their dogs. <laughs> um, say no more. Um, but it is very funny when dogs follow other dogs and the conversations that you have, you start looking at the data. But it just shows how uh, keen these people are. Um, and word of the day, which I can't really say properly, anthropomorphization. Um, it's basically it's humanizing your pets, non uh, humanizing non human objects. And what these people do is they talk about their pets as if they're an extension of their family and they're humanizing them.
for all this, it's, it's all there. But it's just about looking at the nuance of it and filtering and actually looking, taking time to look at that copy and how you can use it. So once you know this information, what you can then do is associate your brand with the interest of the audience. So would you go about previously putting dog food advertising or link ups with a jewellery brand? Probably not. You know what, if your audience is there and that's what they're into, well, it's, it's quite irrefutable. Um, and it should help link your marketing through to what you're doing and reinforce these areas. So again, whoever's managing this, maybe start talking about jewellery. Maybe start talking about doggy jewellery, if you're that way inclined. <laughs> um, and uh, they did a Tesco line extension. And what was interesting was the community didn't like it. They thought it actually cheapened the brand. So whilst it was an extension to what they did, it was a bit of a negative. And you'd have thought tying in with you know, the biggest, I think they're the biggest retailer, um, would be a good thing. Actually, these people didn't think so. So they have to relook really at the way that they're branding and the way it's being positioned within that audience. Um, great phrase, two ears, one mouth, use them in that proportion. It's all about listening to your audience, ultimately. And the customer and the consumer, they're talking, it's just a case of reading it. You take the time to read it, time to listen to it. It's qualitative and quantitative. It's not just about social listening. Actually gather the information, interpret, put it in context, and then apply it to the business. And going back to what I said, it's about being iterative. It's not a one-stop shop. Do it, tweak it, measure it, refine it out there, and it's constantly building up in that space. And that's me rushing through because I know it's the last one of the day. <laughs> so. Questions? Any questions? now, um, under UK, I think it's a regulation now, new videos have to have a um, uh, subtitles requirement on them, um, which has not necessarily been publicised too well. But there's a feature in YouTube where you can, it's just a checkbox and it can automatically create subtitles. I would suggest you read the subtitles it suggests before you publish it, <laughs> because we, we had a client, uh, car manufacturer, and the name of the manufacturer they suggested would be related to missiles. <laughs> so we, you can edit it, but it's there. But so what that allows you to do is actually scan for copy as well. And it's conversations, discussion boards on video, it's quite, it's quite broad. Um, but ultimately, the big two, Facebook and Twitter, love it or not, people talk about mostly there. Um, and yeah, you've got to go with it. Alright, folks, let's give him a clap. Cheers, Nick.